Hello, this is Sanjay Sane from Sane's Academy. This video demonstrates simple linear regression using custom loops in TensorFlow. Let's see that. Over here, we have generated a fake data with the line space function. So over here, here is my line space function with 100 equally spaced values between minus 2 and plus 2 and to that particular vector of x values I am multiplying that vector by 2 and uh, adding 5 to it. So actually speaking our data is having 5 plus 2 into x. So over here 5 is our b naught or I can call it beta naught and this is our b1. So slope is 2 and intercept is b naught. We are deliberately taking this particular data because with this particular data we are going to build a regression model using TensorFlow custom loop. So with our data the relationship is already established between x and y. Now, what I am going to do over here is that I am going to assume the initial weight that is the slope as 3 and bias as 2. Initially, we are taking this as not as 2 and 5 respectively. We are taking that as 3 and 4 so that we will be able to monitor the performance and we will be able to see how this 3 and 4 converge to 2 and 5 respectively. Fine. So as you see these are two numpy arrays and here comes our main program where we are going to define the model. So in this case what we are going to have over here is model class as you see and I am inheriting that class from tf.module class. Now the constructor which I am defining over here calls the constructor of the superclass. Now self.w has been initialized with tf.variable. As you might be knowing that there are two types of objects as far as tensors are concerned. One is variable and another one is constant. For weights, variable should be taken because we want to constantly update that, that particular object. That's why I have initiated with tf variable and that two with the initial weight and the initial weight and initial b I have already set as I had to. Those are 3 and 4 respectively. Also we will see that I have defined over here one more function called underscore underscore call underscore underscore which actually returns us the forward calculation. So whatever will be our x it will be multiplied by the slope and the bias will be added to it and it will be returned. So this particular thing is in force over here. So when you are going to when you are going to call the constructor of model this is going to basically give us the forward pass. Hence over here I am going to execute this with which the model is going to be initialized with initial weight and initial bias. Now the, the next thing which we are going to see over here is the loss function. The loss function I have defined over here as mean squared error. Okay, this is the customized function for mean squared error which I have written over here tf dot reduce mean of square of the predicted value and the actual value. 
Now over here, the next program or next code snippet is of plotting the data. So as you see that the actual data, I'm going to show with blue uh, color and the predicted data I'm going to show with the red color. Well, after that, let us convert these X and Y into tensors so that X and Y will be compatible to our tensor flow options. Now I am going to I am going to apply forward pass to X. So basically over here what is happening is our initial weight and initial bias are going to generate that forward pass. So the values which you see are not the final values. These are the values for first forward pass. Now with the first forward pass that means with, with the weight and bias as 3 and 4. Let us see how are they deviated from the actual ones. So as you see that the two points have been plotted the actual data showing in blue color and the predicted data in red color. So this is deviated. We are going to see with our option of custom loop how these these two lines converge with each other with different epochs. Well, the loss initial loss seems to be 2.36 over here. And these are the initial weights as I had already told. As you see, this is the custom loop in which I am initializing the least of weights. So what is going to be this least W and least B doing? Least W and least B will be storing the weights and biases after every epoch. And one epoch well, one loop will cover one epoch over here in my program. Well, so to begin with, we are first of all going to add the first weight and bias, which is which is our initial value three and four respectively to the least. Then current loss will give us will be given basically by the train function. Now let's examine this train function which I have written over here. Train function accepts model inputs, outputs and learning rate. Well, the learning rate I'm setting over here as 0.1. With TF dot gradient tape as T, the option which is used for differentiation in tensor flow. Now for that, the differentiable function which we are defining over here is the loss function. Loss of model of inputs means whatever are the existing weights. For that those existing weights we are going to do a forward pass and the whatever forward pass is going to result in we are going to compare it with the outputs. Outputs are the existing outputs. Okay and now with this particular statement, with this particular statement, the derivative calculation is going to happen. Derivative calculation is going to happen. And when the derivative means actually over here, I mean partial derivative. Well, so partial derivative has been calculated for both W and B. Those partial derivatives now you will see one thing with this assign sub what is happening is the the new weight new weight is equal to old weight minus the learning rate this learning rate which is usually we call it eta multiplied by the the function the differentiated function well partial derivative so this particular operation is happening over here in both these cases it is happening over here so our train function is updating 
the weights both the weights and these updated weights with those updated weights our current loss is going to be calculated that current loss is going to get stored in the losses uh, losses list and after that we are going to display the progression we are going to display basically the result of every epoch hence now we have executed this let's examine the changes in the values per epoch the initial values as they were were 3 and 4 respectively now after the first epoch you will find that the values so from 3 the value has fallen to 2.73 and from 4 the value has risen to 2 our intention is that this value should converge to true and this value should converge to five let's see whether this is really happening or not so as you see is with this loop this two value is getting converged sorry this three value is getting converged to two and this four value is getting converged to five so ultimately after 25th epoch basically these are 25th five epochs after 25th epoch we have got values basically we have got the best values at 24th epoch itself let's now examine whether they have converged or not and as you see they have converged so we started with with the initial state with these two lines and ultimately these two lines have converged after some 24 to 25 epochs thanks for watching this video the link of this notebook will be given in the description box if you like this video please don't forget to click the like button and for latest updates from me please don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you